Hey guys, this is Nick the Nutter Buster coming at you again. Summertime is here upon us, and uh, I've been taking my kayak out on the water a lot, doing some scouting, getting ready for next season, and finishing up some of our uh, late, late season hog hunting here in, uh, I guess it's April now, we're halfway through, and uh, just want to take a second and talk about my kayak, um, how I've got it set up for hunting. I know that's something that's kind of taken off in popularity over the past few years. Um, I started kayak hunting before I actually started saddle hunting, so I know a lot more about it. I'm very comfortable talking about it. I worked in a outdoor shop um, for about five years. We sold kayaks. We lived right on the Gulf Coast. So between you know the Gulf Coast, the Mobile Bay, and all the river systems, Alabama has more miles of navigable waterways than any other state in the Union, um, or at least that's what the tourist brochures say. So uh, most of our hunting land is going to be accessible by water. Um, in most states, in fact, because of the different wetland conservation acts that have passed, um, a lot of your core engineer land, WMA land, national forests and stuff like that, they're there to protect a waterway. Um, and the same reason that they're so important to us, um, it, it makes for a very rich ecosystem for other wildlife. So the hunting is there, um, and it just so happens to be very, very good. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of how you can take advantage of a kayak to become a better hunter. We're going to talk about how I've got my kayak set up. Um, the biggest thing, water access, I have found even here uh, where most people have boats um, or, or where we have a high percentage of boat owners, you still can't say that most people own boats. Uh, boats are expensive. You have to have a place to store them. Um, you have to be comfortable with taking care of an outboard motor and stuff like that. So most people don't have a boat. Uh, more people own kayaks now. That's becoming a little bit more trendier. Uh, but a lot of your deer hunters and just hunters in general, they're not utilizing kayaks yet. I'm sure I anticipate that changing. Um, but for right now, you're giving yourself a big leg up over other hunters. Sometimes you can cross, literally, I got a place just a mile or two south of me where you can cross a creek. You can really cross it with chest waders. Um, but I hunted it last year. Had some phenomenal hunting there. Saw a lot of game. Never saw any hunter sign at all. Didn't see a single tree stand, a single trail camera. Didn't see a bottle of tanks hanging on a tree limb. Nothing. Um, and we're talking probably 500 to 1,000 acres of property that you have access to. So if you've got water, um, there's tremendous potential to put yourself in a place where literally, when I say I hunt and 99 times out of 100, I don't see another hunter. That's the truth. And I'm hunting I rely heavily, heavily, heavily on my kayak. Um, nice thing about a kayak, too, is you can store it. Worst case scenario, you can store it inside your house. A 12-foot kayak, you can store it in a garage. You don't have to have it on a trailer. You don't have to run out of boat slip or anything like that. They're very easy to store. They're very low maintenance. You don't ever have to worry about your motor going out. Um, a polyethylene boat like you see behind me is very tough. It'll go right over cypress knees, roots, stuff like that. Um, and they're very easy to load. So we're going to talk about this kayak in particular. This is actually, get out of the picture for a second, this is actually a Wilderness Systems Pungo. Um, and it's not what most people think of when they think a hunting boat. The industry sells rack boats to anglers and sportsmen that are typically going to be a sit-on kayak. And I absolutely detest sit-on kayaks. Not a very popular opinion, um, but they're terrible. And here's why. This boat right here, it weighs 40 pounds and it's about 28 inches wide at its widest point. Um, a sit-on kayak that's the same length is going to be double that weight. Um, so you're looking at an 80 to 100 pound boat for most sit-on kayaks if you're getting the same thickness of polyethylene. Um, you can't really car top that. They're also wider, um, which makes them harder to get up on top of a roof and it also makes them slower and harder to paddle. The narrower your kayak is, the better it's gonna, gonna travel. Um, this is not the narrowest kayak I've ever had. I've actually had a Wilderness System Tsunami that was an awesome paddling kayak, but it did lack some of that initial stability and it didn't haul a whole lot of hunting gear. Um, it was a 16 foot long boat, very fast, effortless paddling. You could cruise all day. A boat like this, I can get four or five miles an hour out of. Um, and I can hold it all day. I can sprint a little bit faster. Most guys are not getting four or five miles an hour out of a sit on top kayak, unless you're getting a pedal kayak. And then that brings up a whole nother can of worms. You're adding 30 pounds for your drive system and your cost goes up 
substantially. Um, I can fit all the gear I need. They sell sit on kayaks because they're supposed to be stabler, easier to get in and out of, and they're supposed to hold more gear. And I really think the big reason is people are afraid of flipping a small boat like that. They got memories of being in the Boy Scouts and flipping canoes. Um, a kayak is a lot stabler than you think it is because there's only one of you in it, so you don't have to worry about what the other guy's doing. He's not rocking the boat for you. It's just you rocking the boat so you know what's going on all the time. Um, and then also, you're sitting. Your center of gravity is very low, especially in a sit-in. When I sit in it, my butt is at or below the surface of the water. When you're sitting on top of a kayak, sometimes it feels like you're two freaking feet up over the surface of the water, and they, they feel to me a lot wobblier, actually, than a sit-in kayak. Um, so the biggest thing is just weight, speed, uh, because you're not going to get anywhere particularly fast in a canoe or a kayak So you want every little boost in speed that you can get and then just economics. It's a uh, it's it's 12 foot rack boats like this are very affordable Do if you buy one get a 12 If you don't know a lot about kayaks, just take my word for it. A 12 is just a good balance number um, It's long enough that they track well most of your serious manufacturers of nicer kayaks like wilderness systems and Jackson and stuff like that uh, perception um, you know, cooses and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> they they generally kind of start at 12 feet. You go longer, you get a little bit better tracking, but you're also heavier. You tend to be a little bit more expensive. They don't turn as well in tight creeks. That's a nice advantage of a kayak is you can get up in really, really tight creeks. I've paddled stuff that wasn't as wide as my paddle. I've paddled and been touching bank or touching brush on both sides with my paddle. Um, they don't draw a whole lot of water. Um, Gosh, I mean, if, if I've got enough water, I will run out of depth to paddle through before I run out of water to float my boat in. Um, very easy to get in and out of. Um, when it gets real cold, I like to wear a pair of uh, hip waders to help get in and out of it. Um, but we'll look kind of a little bit closer. So this is a very sleek hull design. Uh, they don't make this camo pattern anymore. Wilderness System doesn't for their pungos because most of their wreck boats are going to be sit on tops which are the devil um just my opinion so if you're saddle hunting you got plenty of room to put everything um kind of take you back here and look at my storage a little bit so you can see this rear hatch i keep this off uh because when i duck hunt i like to be able to just throw my ducks in the back here that hatch i don't really need my stuff to be that waterproof um, I'm not taking this. My local water doesn't have a lot of chop or anything like that. I'm not worried about getting my bag wet. If it gets wet, everything in it can stay wet. This holds... I've got some extra room up in here, actually. Really, believe it or not, I got just about enough room. I can almost uh, cut a deer all up, kind of Warren Womack style in a trash bag, and I can just about get the whole thing back here with my pack. I've also got a little bit of space behind my seat where my life jacket goes. And then you've also got a little bit of room up in the front. It's not much. You got a little extra room to strap something. I hardly ever utilize that. Um, but my bow, it just bungees. And then I don't have it pictured, but I have just a short leash. It's literally just a piece of paracord with a carabiner at both ends. Um, and I'll, I'll clip in generally to my handle back here and then clip onto my bow um, or onto my rifle so that that way if something were to happen and that bungee weren't to keep it secure, um, you know, you don't, you don't lose it in the drink. It's always here with the boat. The boat will float. It's got flotation here and up in the nose. So very comfortable seats, 28 inches wide. Um, the paddle that I got, I got a super good deal on it. Um, so the boat actually came with that Aquabound paddle. I believe the model's like a Stingray or something like that. Um, definitely your paddle is kind of your motor. So spend some extra money and get a nice paddle. Carbon fiber. We like carbon fiber anyway. I love carbon fiber. Um, a carbon fiber paddle is going to be stiffer and lighter, and it makes a big difference. It's like a heavy pair of boots versus a light pair of boots. The lighter your paddle is, the happier you're going to be. Um, and I'll show you real quick if I can set up a good angle. Show you just how easy this thing is to car top. So this is my, my A numero uno hunting vehicle right here. And you can see... When I'm going somewhere, usually my paddle is folded up. I usually pack the car the night before. And 
that's everything I need to, to deer hunt, minus my clothes. My life jacket. Like this, you just lay it on its side with a little small boat like this. I know exactly where it balances, so I can put a hand right here by the back of the seat in front of the seat. And that's it. Uh, just right up on top of the car, you can go right back off of it. I can carry this boat. Just like that. And I can carry it if the boat launch is lined up, if you got people leaving early in the morning to go duck hunt or fish a tournament. Uh, I can park 100 yards away from the boat ramp, walk my boat down, carry my backpack slung over one shoulder, carry my bow in my hand, and I can pretty much, usually in the early season, definitely, when I'm not taking as much gear, extra clothes, I can take this boat, take my gear, make one trip from my truck down to the water, Throw it in the water and go hunting. It don't take me five minutes to get everything packed up and ready to go. Same thing when I get ready to go home. Um, I can tote this thing through the woods. I can drag it. Um, very easy. I've pulled it behind a bicycle before for a couple of miles to get back to a canal. Um, this is very easy. My backyard, it goes down. I got 82 steps to go to the river. I can carry this on my shoulder down there. Um, and launch off my steps. I don't need a boat launch. I can launch on a steep creek, creek bank, whatever. A light 12 foot boat like this, about 28, 29 inches wide, so it's narrow enough that you can get a good paddle stroke in. Um, it's just a fantastic tool in your arsenal if you've got any water that you need to hunt around. Stay away from them, or at least, at least give it a try. Before you spend the money, um, I know they're trendy. I know we all like to have the biggest, nicest toys, um, but bigger ain't better when it comes to kayaks like this. You're never going to make a kayak big enough that you turn it into a John boat. And by the time you get them big sit on top kayaks, you've got the money that you can just buy a John boat. I got, and I got one. I mean, I like it. You can see over there. I got a John boat if I want it. Um, if I want to go and cover a lot of water, um, you know, you can go buy a John boat here in my neck of the woods, $2,000. You can go buy a 14 foot John with a trailer and a little you know five horsepower mercury on it that'll run circles around this but i can carry this to a creek or to a beaver pond or something like that i can float shoot wood ducks i've float shot hogs before um never did manage to float shoot a deer but i shot a really nice eight point out of uh out of a kayak back two years ago um and it was one of them places i've hunted it and never seen another hunter on it and killed a nice buck on his bed about a mile, mile and a half paddle, and I'm getting to land that nobody else ever hunts. So, um, check it out. Stay away from them big old sit on tops and get you a little sit in like this and have you a nice, lightweight, sexy, sneaky way to go kill some deer.